righty, uh, 6.6 .6 is what we are on right now, and that is finding rational zeros, which you guys are just going to love to death here. So let's take a look here at finding some rational zeros here, shall we? Um, when we're doing this, just as a little bit of a reminder for you here, it's the uh, constant. So whatever it's the constant, okay, so whatever the constant number is, which in this case happens to be a 20, okay, over whatever the coefficient is, okay, it's the constant over the coefficient, which happens to be 2, okay. Here's what that means. That means you need to find all the numbers that are divisible by 20. So let's take a look here. That means I can have 1, right? I can have 2. I can have 4. I can have 5. I can have 10. And I can have a 20. Those are all numbers that are divisible by 20. All the numbers divisible by um, 2 are just 1 and 2. But here's the downfall. There's also a positive and a negative of all of those. So here's basically what that means. I have positive and negative of all of these, just so I don't have to write it all the time. I have to look at 1 over 1 as a choice, to look at 2 over 1 as a choice, 4 over 1 as a choice, 5 over 1 as a choice, 10 over 1 as a choice, 20 over 1 as a choice. Then I have to look at plus or minus 1 over 2 as a choice. I have to look at 2 over 2 as a choice. I have to look at 4 over 2 as a choice. I have to look at 5 over 2 as a choice. I have to look at 10 over 2 as a choice and 20 over 2 as a choice. Now, this is just 1, 2, that's just 4, that's just 5, that's just 10, that's just 20. But any duplicates I can get rid of. Well, what is 2 divided by 2, right? That is 1 over 1, so I can get rid of that. What is 4 divided by 2? Well, 4 divided by 2, that is 2, which we have right there. Uh, 10 divided by 2, we actually have that too. That's, oops, sorry, not getting rid of that one. That's a 5. And 20 divided by 2 is 10, which I have right there. So really, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 different things to look for. Okay, So I have 8 different things to look for in this problem. So let's get working on the problem here. I'll try to write them up here. I have 1 half, so remember that one, 5 halves. Remember, it's positive or negative for all of these. And then I can remember all the multiples um, that were of 20. So let's take a look here. I don't even know where to start. So I'm going to do this as if I was one of you. I've never seen this problem before. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to start uh, by writing down the coefficients, which is what I'm doing here. All right, there they all are. Not missing any, so no big deals, right? No big deals. Not missing any of those, right? Um, so um, I'm going to start with one because it was 1 over 1 as being one of the factors. So let's start with a positive 1, uh, just to see if I'm lucky. So bring down the 2. 2 times 1 is 2. I get negative 10. Negative 10 times 1 is negative 10. And I'm getting um, a negative 4. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. And I end up getting 16. Since this is 16, I'm looking for a 0. That's what I want there. If that was 0, I know I have an answer. So really what that's telling me right now is that that's not an answer. That's what that's telling me. So right now, here's what I know. I know, all right, I know that that is not an answer. I know that 1 doesn't work. So I can forget about that. But just because positive 1 didn't work, that certainly doesn't mean that negative 1 won't work. So I bring down the 2. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Add them together, get negative 14. Negative 14 times negative 1 is positive 14. Add them together to get 20. 20 times negative 1 is negative 20. Oh, look, I got 0. So I found one that works. So I've never even done the problem before. I started out at the beginning, and I figured out that negative 1 works. So I know I have one now that works. So remember, when I rewrite this, this is x squared, right? 
this is negative 14x and that's positive 20. Okay, now the problem is I gotta see if I can keep factoring because that negative 1, that's like saying x equals negative 1. Well that factor, if I add 1 to both sides, the factor is actually x plus 1. That's what my factor is. So this is what I have. I actually right now have x plus 1, which is what I have right here, and I have 2x squared minus 14x plus 20. Now is there anything that you notice I can take out of all three of those? I know something I can take out. Why don't we take out a 2 from all of those? When I take out a 2, I actually now have the 2 out in front because I took that out. Still have the x plus 1 there. So I took a 2 out. I now have x squared minus 7x and I have a positive 10. That's what I have. So let's keep writing this. Uh, we got x squared minus 7x plus 10. Just got to remember that x squared minus 7x plus 10. All right, that's what we have there. It's plus 10. That's in parentheses. Um, we just said that I have a minus 1 works, so plus 1 was there. So this is what you should have had written down. Okay, I need to see if I can factor this now. Are there two numbers that multiply to give me positive 10 that add to give me uh, negative 7? You betcha there is negative 2 and negative 5. So really, um, I still have this 2, I have this x plus 1, which is right here, and now I can rewrite this as x minus 2 and x minus 5, and there is that whole entire item up there factored. Okay, uh, And you could have solved this anyway. From the looks of it, I plugged in a negative 1 and that worked. Guess what? If I would have plugged in a 2 to start, I could have finished the problem. If I would have plugged in a 5, I could have finished the problem. So the point I'm getting at here is this worked well in this problem. I made a lucky guess. Some problems, you might not make such a lucky guess to solve in order to factor um, your problem and find out what all the rational zeros are. So let's take a look here at the next one. Um, with this one, we have the 8 at the end, so all the numbers that are divisible by 8 is 1, 2, 4, and 8, so that's not too many. Over, the coefficient is a 1, so really I just have a 1. So really I have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, and plus or minus 8. That's really all I have there. So not too many to look over. So when I write this down, I have a 1, a negative 3, a negative 6, and a positive 8. So let's write it down here. Once again, I didn't do this problem ever, so I'm going to experiment with it as well. I'm going to start off simple. Let's plug in a 1. Let's just see if it works. 1 times 1 is 1. I end up getting negative 2. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. I add that to get negative 8. Negative 8 times 1 is negative 8. And my goodness, talk about my lucky day here. Okay, so the first one I do works. I get 1. I figure out that x equals 1 is an answer. So if I subtract 1 on both sides, I find out that a factor is x minus 1. And keep in mind, remember, this is a x squared. This is an x. So here's what I'm looking at. So what do we got? Uh, x squared minus 2x minus 8 minus 2x minus 8 gotta remember that minus 2x and minus 8 that's what I have in there and we said that 1 worked when I plugged it in so that means x minus 1 was the factor now I gotta try to factor this can you think of two numbers that multiply to give you negative 8 that add to give you um, negative 2 well negative 4 and positive 2. So out in front I have x minus 1 and when I go to factor this one I have an x minus 4 and I have an x plus 2 and there are all my factors right there for that problem. Um, we'll have a couple more here to do because obviously with these the more you see the easier it is. So when we come back here we will try to finish up um, giving you some more examples here, finding some rational zeros with uh, polynomials uh, when we come back. Thanks.